Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the final video in Module 3 Reactive Chemistry. This one's just a brief uh, introduction or at least a link between what we've been looking at in terms of our factors affecting reaction rates and reaction kinetics. What's important here is an understanding of collision theory and we used collision theory or at least we introduced collision theory right at the beginning of this uh, third section of work in um, reaction uh, reactive chemistry to look at the fact that a chemical reaction occurs uh, when particles collide with one another and not just collide but collide with sufficient energy in order for them to react. We now know that certain types of reactions are faster than others. And when we study the reaction uh, rates, we're studying something called chemical kinetics. This word kinetics comes up a lot because it's, it's a reference to the motion of particles that we have present in any chemical reaction. We've also looked at the fact that the rate of a chemical reaction can be increased um, reaction rate by increasing the temperature, adding additional heat to the system, uh, increasing the surface area of any solid particles that are reactants by increasing the concentration of any uh, reactant uh, substances that are solutions uh, and also by the addition of a catalyst. But why does or do each of these factors contribute to an increase in reaction rate? Well, if we're going to explain this, then we're going to need a theory in order to do this. Remember, laws are about mathematical relationships. They're about specific predictions about what's going to happen, whereas theories are our explanations. So a law is a description and a theory is an explanation. We use collision theory to explain each of the changes that we see in reaction rate based on some of these other variables that we've been uh, investigating. So what we want to focus in on is specifically the collisions that occur between the different reactant particles. Once these collisions have sufficient energy in order to break the bonds, then a reaction will occur. And we now have a name for this uh, sufficient amount of energy. It's called the energy of activation or the activation energy. We can represent this on an energy profile diagram with an energy hill that must be climbed. And when you reach the top of that hill, you've reached the amount of energy required in order for the reaction to proceed. The greater the number of collisions between reactant particles and the greater the energy of the particles involved in the collision, the greater the reaction rate. So therefore, if we start to look at the fact that um, for example, surface area is going to increase the number of collisions between reactant particles, then we get a greater reaction rate. Whereas if we increase the temperature, we're actually increasing the uh, average kinetic energy of the particles involved in the collision, and this too will affect the reaction rate. So what we want to try and do is draw the link between are we increasing the number of collisions are we increasing the amount of energy of the particles and are these in turn leading to an increase in reaction rate? This um, is kind of segueing us nicely into our final topic for year 11 chemistry, which is drivers of reactions. And one of the most important drivers of reactions is this study of energy particularly what happens as we heat substances, as we add heat energy into a particular reaction system. We know that there are energies present already in any substance. In fact, the energies that are present are pretty much the chemical potential energy that's present uh, in the bonds of the substance and also the kinetic energy, the um, vibrational, rotational or translational energy as the particles vibrate in a solid or move from one place to another in a gas. The sum of all of these internal energies is equivalent to a concept known as enthalpy. Enthalpy is not just this sum of total internal energy, but it also um, includes a multiple of the uh, pressure and the volume. 
It was the Swedish uh, Nobel Prize winning uh, chemist Svant Arrhenius who basically linked these ideas of kinetic energy and activation energy together to give us a, a more of a quantitative measure of exactly what's going on in any chemical uh, reaction. Arrhenius said that a reaction will occur if the sum of the kinetic energies of the reactants is greater than the activation energy. Often we talk in terms of kinetic energies of the average kinetic energy of the particles because not all of the kinetic energies will be identical. There may be slight differences. And so we often talk about the average kinetic energy. This helps us explain, for example, the addition of heat. That addition of heat is going to transfer the heat energy into kinetic energy. The extra heat will make the kinetic energy greater. The particles will move faster. And this results in a higher proportion of the particles having a kinetic energy that's greater than the energy of activation, therefore greater than the energy needed for them to react. This is really just a little bit of an introduction to the idea behind um, energies within uh, chemical systems and it's something that we're going to explore in a lot more detail in our final module drivers of reactions thanks for watching